Test, test, test. How is my volume? Well, well, well. I know I've been using well, well, well a lot recently, but maybe I mean more like hello, hello, hello. Yeah, I'm the kind of person I think that hopes that they never run out of ways to say hello to other people. Running out of ways to say goodbye, that's fine, you know? That's to be expected. You've got goodbye, see you later. Well, even see you later isn't really like a goodbye. It's sort of like a, a promise of another hello. You could, yeah, you could, make the argument, I think, that that see you later, see you later is, is a form of hello. Almost as much as, if not more, than it is a form of goodbye. Hmm. What else do we have? So goodbye. So long. Farewell. Good riddance. That, that's a mean one, though. I hope I never have to say good riddance. But then you have hello. You have what's up. You have good to see you. Come here often, I guess, is, is a kind of hello. Um, anyway, to anyone seeing this, I hope I never run out of ways to say hello to you. Um, maybe that's who I am, as like a, a warm, cuddly comfort streamer. Maybe I like lower the volume of everything I'm saying. I get in really close to the microphone. I go, yes, hello. Welcome back to And And Yes. One moment. See, now I'm really warm toned. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> I don't know, doing something like that. Sorry, I had to fix the, the lighting. I'm trying to keep it consistent. Um, consistency, I wouldn't argue, is one of my, like, you know, best traits. But it's something I'm trying to do for this. You know, some kind of through line. Um, I'm here, you know, chatting with all of you every weekday. Um, I know you guys are going to miss me a lot tomorrow and Sunday. Um, but keeping consistent in terms of when I'm doing it, how long I'm doing it for, what do I look like when I'm doing it? Am I presentable? How's the lighting? You know, I know that I promised to put those uh, pictures back up, and I haven't gone back up yet, but they will soon. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed uh, today's monologue. You might have been able to tell from the music or from the misclick at the beginning of the video, but uh, we're playing Jack Move again. And I'm just praying that we can make some progress this time. Because this game's a lot of fun, and I think it's stylistically cool. And I get a real kick out of it every time I play it, but uh... I feel like I'm dookie, dookie butts at it. Um, but I mean, that's not necessarily new. I'm dookie butts at every game I play. Um, Alright, whatever. Can I run? There's no run option. So I was thinking about it. I feel like the, the like, physical attack, like, uh, sort of concept that I had last time, uh, is, is, a, is big. It's, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be focusing on physical attack. I think I should go back to, you know, doing, like, uh, executes 
It feels like memory leak is... Uh, I think these guys are weak against wetware. Because it says great whenever I do a wetware attack. But look at this! I I've just gotten here and I'm already almost dead. Embarrassing. Embarrassing is what I say. And they're gonna attack like a bunch of bunch of times. And I'm gonna sit here and be... A boohoo cringe baby, I think. That's the difference between me and Noah, is if I was in the game world... What, you're still not dead? If I was in the game world, um, I would simply beat them in one hit. Come on, you've got to die to this one. Finally. Am I underleveled? I don't know, it feels like I might be a little underleveled. Who knows? Don't kill me. Alright, I killed them. It's all good. Alright, so I think... Maybe I... Think... Alright, you go to... Hardware? Yeah. Um... Actually, no. Uh... Software. And you... Uh... Uninstall, uninstall. Okay. Now you have... Seven free. Okay. Uh, so what you do then is, I believe you get rid of this. No, you don't even need to. You get rid of this for software damage, and then you go into software and you add short circuit, and then you add. Uh, no, you can't. No, you can't. Okay, cool. So now I have strong against electroware, strong against cyberware, and strong against wetware. How do you know which is which? Is it because they're green? They're cyberware? Also, let me get rid of this annoying beeping noise. Okay. I've got some data packets, but honestly, I wish I had more. Okay, good. Since I beat that, they're not there anymore. Which means I might be able to make it here. Yes. Alright. I think I'm in a good spot. What's the mom fuel of the day, you ask? Can you guess? Based off this mischievous smirk on my face? <laughs> it's coffee. This late in the afternoon, you ask? Oh yeah. Who needs sleep? Got a jack move. Hit him with some stack overflow. Easy peasy. I've only miss messed that one up once. And I was so embarrassed when that happened. Nice. And they're still not dead. That's horrible. These guys are too strong. Who do I want to get rid of first? Probably not the tank. Let's see. Get rid of this one first then. Please? Alright, nice. I might be able to get him... I should be able to get him this time, which means I can attack again. It won't kill me in one. What? Miss? Alright, but we're back at full, you can't stop me. And then we get two turns in a row. You're in trouble, buddy. Miss! What the heck? Is this even allowed? Get him. Nice. Alright. Let's continue onward. And we'll save the data packet for when we get there. Whoa, oh, it's, it cutscened us. 
Alright, let's see what you got, you overgrown data depot. I should have, uh... I should have done the data up before I got in. Whoa, this thing's cool. Oi. Alright, let's see. Let's go for the left first. Why not? Nice. Oh, wrong. Okay. So I guess maybe we try the right triangle first? Oh, cool. What did you do? Oh, we can jack move it. Maybe that's not a good idea, though. Nah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, get them all. Blink, blink, blink. Is it gonna zap us back, though? Because we're being naughty? Alright, so it's Pi is the next one. Because I saw it in a dream. Electron gun? Whoa, chill out. Alright, what's wrong with my... Remove negative status effects. Sure. Alright, and then we heal. Yeah, then we definitely heal. Alright, so we gotta make sure we hit the right one. What? Are you kidding me? I'm gonna assume it's this one. No! Darn it. Alright, back to the start. Alright, and then Pi. Jeez Louise. And then... I feel like these are different. Oh well, maybe they are. Got him. Is that it? No, he's, he's weakened now. Hmm. Jack move. Blink, blink, blink. Easy. You guys seen any good artists recently? I've been thinking about Barnett Newman. That's an artist that I like with the zip paintings. I told this story a while back. Well, a while back, like maybe two or three episodes ago. Um, about Concord, uh, the painting that I saw that I cried in front of. But, um,. Flashy Ford says, what is this boss? I'll get to that in a second. I'm telling a story. Um, but I was on Google just looking up some Barnett Newman paintings. That guy's incredible. Um, I don't know. His, uh, his artwork was also where I learned to sort of, I don't know, reject the concept of like art having an objective meaning. Like, I think... I don't know, when I was younger, the thought that like, you know, someone could, someone would make an artwork and then they would be like, this is what it means. I'm like, that makes sense, you know? And because they made it, what they say it means, you know, surely they're right. Um, oh, I got a heal. Oh, I'm in a tough spot. Um, you know, because they made it, surely they're right. But I, I don't think I agree with that now, and I think that Barnett Newman... Well, maybe not for the reason you're expecting me to say. Oh god, three in a row? Yeesh, I'm in a tough spot. Heal me up more, then I'll data pack it on my next turn. Hopefully... Well, that means I have to tank five shots in a row. Maybe take a turn off? Jeez Louise, man. Please go easy on me. I should survive one more. I won't survive one more. Um, bummer. Alright, let's just continue. Whatever. Um, gosh. Losing a bunch of XP. Um, so, yeah. I saw a different painting by Barnett Newman. Another one of the zip paintings. I can't remember the name. But I remember reading... Um, 
on like a little plaque next to it that the painting had been made sort of like about uh, World War Two, I believe. World War One or Two. I uh, I can't remember my memory escapes me. I should know, but whatever. Um, and I remember seeing it and being kind of like, that's fair. That's totally fair. You know, Barnett Newman made this painting about World War One or World War Two, but that wasn't what the painting was about to me. Um, you know, the concept that someone creates a piece of art and upon releasing it, they kind of lose... Oops. They, they lose the right to sort of command what it does and does not mean. Uh, gosh. Am, I feel like I'm underleveled. I mean, these guys are kicking my ass. Maybe I just don't have, like, the right build for it. I feel like I was supposed to spend my money on, like, better things than just spending it on a bunch of, like, physical attack items that don't mean anything. Anyway, I'm losing my train of thought. What I'm saying is, uh, you know, once the artwork is released into the world, the artwork, the meaning is no longer yours, I think. Right, let's see. Everything looks fine. Everything looks fine. Um, instead, it becomes the meaning of everything, you know? And, of course, through discourse, people can change the minds of other people. Like, you know, if I was the artist and I released a piece of art and it was, like, you know, picked up by a bunch of people that are, like, you know, maybe I, I politically disagree with and they're misinterpreting the art purposefully to, to sort of like serve a purpose then through discourse I can you know I can say like that wasn't what I intended through that however unfortunately in that scenario and fortunately in other scenarios I don't think that I have the right to say that isn't like you're not allowed to think that that's what it means uh, what I can say though is look at look at this part I feel like you're ignoring certain elements of it and try and understand that maybe the meaning is different to the way that you're interpreting it. But then, you know, equally through discourse, other people are allowed to say, hey, person that made this art, I think you're misinterpreting your own artwork. Like, have you ever considered looking at it from this point of view? So, you know, to that effect, art, art belongs to everyone, I think, when someone chooses to release it into the world. Um, you know, and that's for better or for worse. Um, like in the case of Barnett Newman, you know, I was understanding it from a very, uh, emotional perspective. And not that's not to say that, you know, and either of the world wars weren't emotional. Um, but it's more to say... It, uh... It meant something else to me compared to... Wait, I thought that was right! I thought it was four at the end. Am I missing something? Am I supposed to attack the guy in the middle? and then he's gonna tell me what the correct one is. That's probably it. Um, so flashy forwards, this boss is a uh, green goo. Uh, we find the green goo in the virtual space, I think. All right, so now it breaks and then we jack move. Oh yeah. It's the construct. The construct doesn't say what it's strong or weak to, so I'm just gonna go for a stack overflow. I don't know if there's supposed to be no music at this point, but... Oops, I didn't do it perfectly. Um, yeah, this boss is called the construct. I think it's gonna tell us where our dad is. Um, or maybe it's the AI that we're trying to kill. Who knows, man. Maybe I should have focused more on defense for this fight. Uh, but I have so much, I have so much, um, blue juice that I can't imagine he'll be able to, like, beat me that quickly. Flashy Ford, how's your day going? My day's going pretty good. I have coffee in my mom fuel mug. Yummy, yummy.
I've been thinking a bit. Flashy forward says semi pog. All right, well, hopefully you'll be able to draw out the uh, the innate pog of the day, you know, and maybe you'll feel better as time goes on. Um, yeah. Anyway, I've been thinking a lot about basically what what this channel sort of identity is going to be. You know, I've been playing a bunch of different games, uh, sucking ass at all of them, but trying my best nonetheless. You know, and you have these people that stream, like, you know, the big, like, AAA titles that come out, and you have the people that really focus on, like, the indie titles. And, like, I suppose I feel this uh, strange pressure to sort of, like, decide where I fit into all of that, you know? And, like, you know, playing things like Jack Move, which, like, I want to say are, like, you know, analytically not that strong. However, like, even through that, it's kind of like a funny statement because, you know, analytically not that strong for me is, like, you know, I get, like, you know, ten people coming in and out of, like, the, the stream as I go versus maybe, like, thirty people. Um, and, you know, with only a couple of people that are sort of, like, recurrent viewers. Um, so I guess that uh, that's one of the great things about it being a, a small streamer, I suppose, is there is no such thing as like an analytically terrible game, because everything you do is analytically terrible. Like you know, the numbers are are always going to be like below fifty, at least for the stage that I'm at at the moment, um, which is kind of funny, I think, in its own way. Um, I don't know what this uh, debuff is. If I hover over you, do you tell me? Nope. Let's just uh, keep going in this very strangely uh, musicless zone. Keep dodging, that's right. Um, so yeah, I mean, w what games does the man that has no analytics play to have good analytics? What do you give to the man who has everything? Um, is the answer to that nothing? I, I, I don't really remember. <laughs> but yeah, I've gotten some, some recommendations from some buddies, you know, they're like, play Undertale, play Shovel Knight, and then, you know, then I'm in that weird place where it's like, you know, those games are, those games are good, those games are great, um, but very overrepresented, you know, like, I've been angling for maybe playing some more, like, underrepresented games, like, you know, like, Fetch the Ferret, and, um, I gotta heal, um, I wouldn't necessarily say Jack Move is underrepresented, but like Fetch the Ferret, uh, Disc Vivers, stuff like that. Um, yeah, playing some stuff that's underrepresented because, I don't know, then it's sort of like, I, I don't necessarily have the audience for it at the moment, but I can kind of like champion these games, you know, talk about how much I enjoy them. Yay, I did it. Whoa! I think I was really underleveled because, yeah, I mean, look, I just leveled up like 17 times. What the heck? <laughs> Alright, cool. Well, nice. Um, Alright. Uh, probably a lot of talking coming up, but uh, to continue what I'm saying, yeah, being able to champion some of the games that are, like, smaller, being able to, you know, it, it makes me feel as though I'm not gonna get drowned out in the, uh, in, like, the searching algorithm, you know? If I, if I played Undertale and I posted that to YouTube, or if I played it on Twitch even, you know, like, if someone searched Undertale, there's no way that I'm anywhere near the top of, of that search function. Like, I'm, you know, probably quite low. Um, I like this soul, soulful, sort of sad music in the background. Play me off. Um, you know, whereas on the other, on the other hand, like, I don't know, it's kind of like what I want to do with the, with the art corner, is like, you know, have people, you know, give people a space, um, you know, through which they can kind of like, um, you know, share their artwork 
uh, you know, when they might not have those spaces to begin with. And it's funny because on the back of that, you know, this project for me, I'm attempting to share, I don't know, I guess myself, my personality, the way I play games with you, but I don't necessarily have like the space for that considering, you know, places like Twitch are like severely sort of overpopulated. Um, you know, the rich get richer and, you know, in terms of views and whatnot. Um, and we all try our best here at the, at the bottom of the analytics. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I was saying, it's interesting that that's my scenario, but I'm trying to carve out a space for other people to feel like they have more, I don't know, I, I like to think that it's sort of like a big heavy plate and everyone lifts it together. Not and and yes, the, and and yes isn't the plate. And and yes is, I think, one of the people lifting, or one of the concepts lifting the plate. But, I don't know, the plate being like, you know, ha having a, ha having ways that we can share our art with one another. Um, so that said, if anyone is doing any art, I actually have a piece, uh, or some pieces that I'm going to show today for Art Corner later, which I'm super excited about. Uh, someone anonymously sent some stuff in, so I'm very excited to share. I mean, I know who it is, but it's, they were like, I want to be anonymous for this. Um, but yeah, I mean, if anyone also is like working on a game, like, you know, send me the Steam link and I'll play it on a Variety Monday, or a Munderground, sorry, Munderground, not Variety Monday. We've moved past that. Um, anyway, back to the game. Sorry for such a, I mean, I'm like, oh, let's make some progress today. And then here I am, like, just sort of talking for, you know, 10, 15 minutes um, about this and that while Noah says, what the what? What was Abner's voice? Oh, man. Oh, well. Uh, I'm gonna give him a neutral voice, I guess? Hello, honey. Sorry for the rough stuff. I had to be sure it was you. Dad? But how? No. You're just the AI that lives here, right? I call this program my home, yes. But I assure you, I'm not an AI. What are you, then? One of his crazy experiments? I am a proof of concept. A precursor for mental transference. Digitized human consciousness. One mind? Mono mind? Mono mind, one mind. The hive mind. All the minds in the computer, like a network. Blah. Yes. I knew it. I saw it coming. Wowie. The original Abner perfected a process by which to map neural activity, copy it, and then reformat it as digital code. In other words, I am a perfect copy of Abner Solaris's mind. Pick up me as a virtual backup. Corp sh- Noah, please. Language. How? That's impossible! And even if that's true, why the hell would my dad want to duplicate his own mind? Wait, this is about mom, isn't it? Dude, is that brain her mother? It only started with your mother, Noah, but I promise you it doesn't end with her. This is sick! Good sick or bad sick? No, the initial intention was to resurrect Amanda, but I came to see the folly of that ambition years ago. And in the process, I developed a breakthrough that could change the nature of human life as we understand it. You couldn't change anything back then, and you can't change anything now. Even if you can copy the minds of the ill and the dying, it's just VR. Not real life. This is just a program. Is this real life? You're being imprecise. Reality is a spectrum. This conversation is real. Your experience ha here happened, did they not? As much- I am as much your dad as- Stop! Just stop! I didn't come here to debate metaphysics. I'm trying to get you... I'm trying to get the original Abner back. Would you guys... Would you guys take that deal? Would you guys live in a virtual plane? Like... Forever? They copy your consciousness. Perfectly. Like, one-to-one. -one. 
and around your consciousness, like your your body forms, you know, you can change your body a little bit, but you're going to end up looking human, and you're recognizable as yourself, even if it's just because you have a little thing floating above you that's it's like a name tag. But you get uploaded into a virtual plane, and due to the time dilation of, of that virtual plane, you live there infinitely, forever, you know, uh, your perception of forever. Um, would you take that deal? Um, would you forfeit your body and, and flock to the virtual landscape? I wouldn't. I would not. I, I, I think it would be fun. I, so I don't mind the idea of uploading my consciousness into a virtual reality. My problem, though, is if I, if I can't, like, basically turn myself off, like, you know, the idea of forever scares me, I think, you know, because I don't know if I would retain myself through that foreverness. And I think a loss of who I currently consider myself to be in a complete and ultimate way over a series of lifetimes is a worse death than, you know, my heart stopping and my brain function ceasing, you know. I don't know what lies on the other side of that, you know, of not being me anymore. Um, and so I think that's a scary concept. Um, but if I could turn myself off, I would, I would give it a whirl for sure. Um, the other problem, though, is who controls the virtual space? You know, because if it's like, like Facebook, if it's like Meta, and Meta has figured out how to do this, and like, you know, everyone is jumping into the simulation, like, you know, it's not gonna be, or I worry that it wouldn't be fun. It would be even more sort of like, capitalistic, work forcey, work horsey, work forcey, work horsey, um, than even our world is now, you know? If it's like Elon or, or Zuck, like, you, you get it, you're gonna get there, and they're gonna be like, all right, like, employee number so-and-so, and you're gonna be like, what? I thought this was a vacation. And they're like, this is the digital world. You're our data now, like, you know, we, you know, get to work, like, sort these numbers, like, you know, and, and then, you know, the, the physical limitations of, of, like, the body, like, tiredness, you know, no longer matter. And then, and then there's also, like, the, the, the fearful, or the scary concept of, like, you know, let's say you're going on a vacation, you're uploading your consciousness into this vacation world that Meta has sort of made for you, um, and you're gonna be there for like a day, but it's gonna feel like a month, right? Who's to stop like this corporation? Let's stop calling it Meta, let's call it a corporation because we don't know who's gonna get there first. But what's stopping this corporation from basically duplicating the data that it now has of your mind? You know, one mind goes and has a great time at the vacation, you know, on the beach, on the internet beach, but then the other one ends up in like this cellar, you know, this horrible, dank basement and it's forced to sort of like sort out numbers for forever like for infinity you know it's a concept of like i don't know a, a psychological or or an ego coin flip they're both you both of them are just as much you as you are yourself now but you know which you is lucky and which you is unlucky I guess, um, you know, lucky enough to return back to your own body, um, or unlucky enough to sort of spend an eternity in like a, I have no mouth but I must scream hellscape. Food for thought. And, um, you know, maybe it's Monomind, maybe that's what Monomind's trying to do. Turn everyone into their little corporate drones forever and ever, um, through the use of, uh, of plugging the mind into the into the system. Anyway, simulation and stuff like that. Not simulation theory, which is like a whole other conversation, you know, but the like concepts about simulation and what can be done with them once we have like full sort of like dive access, like mental dive access. Um, it's thrilling. It's exciting. Um, 
I hope I'll be around to see it when it eventually does happen, but I want to make sure that I don't end up on the wrong side of it, you know? I'd love, like, a San Junipero, um, but then I would hate, like, basically all of the other Black Mirror simulations. You know, it, it comes in a range. San Junipero was a simulation. I only saw that one once, and it was ages ago. There was also, like, the Star Trek one that was a simulation, I think. I'm trying to get the original Abner back. He has been taken to Monomind headquarters in Mono City 1. Flashy Ford says, geez. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is a little bit downer, but... Yeah, Flashy Fords, would you upload your, um... Your mind into the, into the simulation? Let's assume that it's not run by, like, a... Like a corporation. Like, it's... It's neutral space. But you're there forever. Flashy Fords, do you, do you take eternity? Um, an eternity with no body slash whatever body you want. Um, but you are, you are basically pure ego now. You know, you're, you are just yourself, you know, not existing on a physical realm. How can you know that? The mini mem you stored on was sealed in his basement when all that stuff happened. The original Abner has a neural interface designed to upload his memories to me daily. Yeah, that neutral voice has really become a robot voice. You mean you saw everything? Then tell me what's happening. Why is this crawl lady- what does this crawl lady even want? Imagine the less savory use of this technology. Imagine the corporate or military applications. What about- what was I saying? What was I just talking about? Mm -mm. We're talking about virtual soldiers, spies, cyberspace assassins, unkillable and forever mass-producible. Imagine what the highest bidder wouldn't pay for immortality. And this is what Crawl wants? Immortality? I believe so. And she has- and she believes I am the key. Where exactly in the Monomine headquarters are the key for my dad? Can you tell me? The research levels have changed a lot since I used to work there, so I'm afraid I can't give you a complete map. But I can tell you the exact route they took from the VIP entrance to where he's being held. I'm transferring that information to your friend now. Ryder, was it? My father's still safe, then. As of my last update, yes, but that was four hours ago. Don't underestimate them. Monomind is a hydra. Cut off one head, it might grow another two. I can handle it. Good for you, Noah. I believe you can. You have always been so strong, Noah. Before you go, I want you to know that even if, I, if something happens to the original Abner, he isn't lost. I am not lost. Please do not put yourself in harm's way for me. You're not him. I, I think he is him. Like, I mean, not as in, like, I, I think, like, as though there's a question as to, like, maybe if he's misleading us. If you are the uploaded, it's like what I was just talking about, you know, if you're the uploaded version of someone's consciousness, you are you, still. And if they duped my consciousness and I was still here and my consciousness was somewhere else, they're both me. You know, maybe I'm the original, I'm the first. But it's like, you know, it's like the ship of Theseus, like, you know, the cells in my body keep dying out and growing back, like... You know, I'm not the first even to myself. I'm just the first that you can sort of like trace in a continuous line, even with its hundreds of thousands of bumps and ridges. You're not him. And even if you were, I still don't know if I would care. I'm so sorry you still feel that way, Noah. Good luck, honey, and I love you. I love you too, Dad. See, I'm now. Now I'm Noah. I, I love you too, Dad. All right, let's get out of here. That sounded glitchy. Talking to your dad, but not your dad, Noah. I'm all right. Do you think you can play the constructs' memories? We need to have a look. I agree, but first you need a breather. That must have been a mind melt. Ryder. I'm serious. It's gonna take me a while to set everything up anyway. Go outside. Get some air. 
and come back here in a bit. All right, thanks. Don't mention it, partner. Let me steal your stuff. Anyway, something's gonna happen to me while I'm gone, most likely. Because games don't usually have you, like, step outside unless, you know, something's happening. Ryder betrayed us. Alright. Take me to Deck Lord's Palace. I think I want software. So this is like strong, strong, you know, okay. I'm not doing physical anymore. Reduce target's accuracy for three turns, that could be good. I already have Hyperderm. Poison could be fun too. Alright, let's pick up. Memory leak. Uh, okay. Cool. We'll get the the big bads of all of them, and then I don't know. Give me some hardware. Soldered RAM, yes please. All right. Now let's hit hit him with the software. Wait, I thought I got soldered ram, so... Oh, I guess there's like a limit to how much ram you can have. Oh, hmm. Is there? Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Alright, let's take core dump. Ah, uh, I don't know. I s is, so is this the maximum amount of RAM I can have? I guess so. Executes overclock at the start of battle. That seems good. And what is this? Sure. I don't know. It's expensive, so it must be good. What's overclock? I don't remember. Alright. And then let's see. I don't think we need this, so we could get rid of this as well since it's maxed, and that since it's maxed. This one, and then where's the other big one? Zombie, yeah. Maybe if there was a way to, is there a way to? Hmm. To up the amount of uh, uh, DP we have? Is that what it's called? Uh, oh, these two are interesting.
Oh, that's funny. That could be fun. Alrighty. What's our objective? Wait for Ryder to set up his equipment. Search each east of town for Tef's lost goods. I'm probably strong enough right now. I can probably take out those, uh, those bikers. Is it this way? Were they bikers? Oh no, it's just a scrapyard. Yeah, this one. And he's like, careful. It's really hard if you go here. And yet, I still go here every time. Alright, let's see. That's not too bad. Alright, so they're purple. Which means Fork should be strong against them. That was a lot of damage. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I leveled up a bunch after that fight. Alright, let's keep going. That's probably what we're trying to get, right? Got anything difficult for me? I didn't think so. So it's strong against wetware. Strong against cyberware. Strong against electroware. I think because you're blue, you're probably electroware. No. Maybe you're neutral? I don't know. Oof. You're green, so you gotta be cyberware, right? Mm. Oh no, not dead? Alright, hyperderm me up. And then Jack, move me. Unless I could just... This should probably take him out, right? Yeah, okay, cool. And then let's see, so if you're... are you wetware? No. I guess you were cyberware also? Who knows? Alright. Get you. Whoa, a thousand credits. Don't mind if I do. All right, we can jack move these 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 goobers. Hmm. Let's do killer what? Wait, no. This one's maxed, and this one's maxed. Let's do this one. <laughs> and you guys fall in now. <laughs> nice. And then... I wonder if I just punch you. Yeah, let's try it. Take him out. Nice. But I'm starting to feel like I don't necessarily have the resources. What is overclock? I don't remember. Does this get, are you sure it doesn't give me more? It doesn't give me more.
All right. Well. Um, and then we'll patch up. And then I guess we'll keep going because we've come this far. I think we're okay. A big fight. Nah, these guys are easy. You get, they're green, so get them with the wet wear. What? No. Holy bell. All right, well, maybe this time you won't miss. Thank you. And then... Mm. Yeah, I can see the issue where uh, using these more powerful moves puts me in a position where I'm, I'm slightly vulnerable uh, to overusing my, uh, my moves. Because they cost 30 a pop instead of like six, like they used to. Wait, I got all my stuff back. Oh, because I leveled up. Mm. Very nice. All right, um, yeah, you are certainly much more dangerous. Nice. I might just be able to punch you. Yeah, that's fine. You can hit me a little bit. Yeah, I have so many turns in a row. Alright. Let's get this briefcase that this person was complaining about. I think it's down here. It's Tef's Lost Goods. Alright. Let's take him back. Oof. It's fight like, fights like these that I wish I could run away. Oh, but it's fights like these that I'm glad to have my, uh... Glad to have my jack move ready. I'm doing the purple one because I know that there are two purple ones, but, uh... But the green one is easily the biggest threat to me, I think. Um, so making sure that... What? It didn't go out. Does core dump do more damage than a jack move? Now what do you think? Should I just skip out of here or should I keep exploring? I guess... I'll get out of here. I uh, feel like I pushed my luck enough. I don't have any more data packets. I would need to be leveling up to get my, uh, to get my data back. And yeah, that has a big uh, X on it, so... I would assume I would go over there and it'd be like, you need a key. And I'd be like, oh, I need to get the key next time. Yo, hey, what's up, Rat Brain? You like the graphics? Rap Brain, I gotta say, you're a, a really wonderful chatter because you always come into chat and you're like, I like this thing. Like, I don't know, I feel like you're always positive about whatever I'm playing, um, which I appreciate a lot. Um, yeah, this game is called Jack Move. Um, I'm just beating up these, uh, these punks with my hacking skills. Um, Rap Brain? says that uh, they do like the things. Me too. I, I'm i an enjoyer, um, first and foremost, I would say. I, I'm not above, I think, some criticism, but uh, but all the things I've been playing recently, I've been enjoying a lot. All right, uh, whoops. 
That's not the one I wanted to get. Alright, so we'll heal up. Uh, we don't need to jack move these guys, we can jack move the next group of enemies we come across. Should just start punching, because otherwise I won't have enough to make it through the next few fights. Rat Brain, you like the way they punch? And then the pew! Also, how's the, how's the music volume for you guys? Because the music in this game is awesome. Like this one? Yeah. I hope everyone else can hear that music too. Rat Brain says volume is good, and the punch is very dramatic, but their favorite is the uh, the thumbs up at the end. They turn around, they do the peace sign. Yeah, the protagonist is called Noah, even though you would really think that their name would be Jack. The, 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 the game is called Jack. Move. Yeah, first name Jack, last name Move. Please, my parents were Mr. and Mrs. Move. You can call me Jack. Skadoosh. We got that person's briefcase. Let's get out of here. Never mind. One more fight. For good measure. Take that in one go. Not bad. And then take this person out in one go. Cool. We're out of here. Alright. Let's go give that person their stuff back. And then we'll go see if Ryder's done. I think they were in Gwyn's Tavern. Chum, 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 chum. Rat Brand, I think you missed the conversation earlier, but we were talking about would you uh, upload your brain into a computer um, if it meant that you would live forever? Gwyn's drop. Oh, they're friends now. Data War veterans only. Bumber. Where firewall? Rat brain, uh, similar to me, doesn't think they want to live forever. Uh, <laughs> Rat brain says uh, said as a computer. Uh, I meant in a computer, but that's fair too. I wouldn't want to be a computer either. Um, all right, where firewall increases software defense. That's pretty good. I'll probably never use it. Rat Brain says none of the above. Alright, fair enough, fair enough. Alright, Ryder, are you done? Ready? Ready as I'll ever be! Go ahead, play it! You got it. The Construct received a new upload. A new upload while you were gone. Its most recent memories from about half an hour ago. Bring it up on the monitor now. 
I like the figure that's like... Oh, I remember, she was British. Good evening, Dr. Solaris. Ready to resume our chat? May I remind you that sharing your process would aid a good cause. Your work will benefit all humanity. It will save millions, trillions of lives. Put a stop to death as we know and fear it. If anyone appreciates the magnitude of the miracle you've wrought, it is us. And you showed that appreciation with home invasion and imprisonment. It is your own failure to understand the significance of your invention that brought us to this savagery. What I am offering you, Doctor, is our assistant. assistance. We here at Monomind will have the means to take your work and perfect it. I worked at this very corporation. I know what you are capable of, and I know you are a lying. You are still lifetimes away from accomplishing what you claim. On our own, perhaps we were. But we've recently acquired the assistance of someone whose research is, in fact, much like your own. Dr. Ifrit Kadir. Have you heard of him? Is that the Eggman guy? The mad experimental scientist from the outside. Really, Eartha, how desperate are you? Dr. Kadir is one of the few exceptional minds left in this world. With his knowledge and yours, we can finally make a full transfer of the human mind, not just a copy. If you have someone to save, this won't help you, you know. Don't be selfish. Just because it's too late for you, it's not too late for others. Please don't tell me. You aren't doing this for Mono Mind at all. Who then? Who are you losing? With further research and sufficient effort, we can... No, it will only drive you mad. Don't go down the path I did. It's a lonely, horrid road that only leads to misery. I refuse. I won't do it. Simple as that. You disappoint me, Doctor. In time you will see reason, with or without force. Cool. That lady's got some nerve. How does the route into Monomine HQ look? Dangerous. After your recent career as a vandal, their guards block an access to Mono City 1. Word on the street is our good friend Null Pointer can crack the security on that service entrance near Modern Body, just west of here. I'll leave, I'll leave it to you to grab the deets from him. Then we'll need to get through the Monomite HQ security. I reckon the warehouse entrance will be the easiest. We'll figure something out. You spent too much time with Gwian, you know. They won't even know what's hit him. I'll hook up the construct to your deck. If you need to access it, you can jack in using a public data zone. You should also check out Deck Lord and see if they have any neat upgrades that could help. Wicked Wafers! Thanks, boss! HSE, welcome back. Long time no see. Uh, you say you love the southern accents? Yeah, me too. They're one of the few accents that I can do uh, poorly, albeit. Um, but I... Yeah, it's that in British accents and then, uh, then the neutral accent I'm doing for the dad. Uh, which is kind of like a robot. Let's see. I think we should just take a bunch of data packets. Like 10. And then, yeah, 10 health packets. Fun. Yep, how are you doing today, HSE? We're playing Jack Move. Um, and I I believe that over the course of I think this is the third time we're playing it. Um I've uh Whoa! Going into the construct. Um Yeah, over the course of however many times I played this, uh I think I've predicted the plot so far, mostly through shitty jokes, but <laughs> I came to ask more questions. You are trying to understand. That makes me happy. You making an effort to learn makes me very proud. So your process is simply a believable static copy of Dad's mind, right? Well, not exactly. In many aspects, I live on my own. The original Abner's mind was a framework from which I could build up my own intelligence. But then that means you and him aren't actually the same person, right? 
I disagree. I have his brain structure, his memories, his hormonal profile, a complete blueprint of his DNA and his neurological framework. I don't see how I am, in any aspect, not abnormal. But he's still out there, alive. And in between the memory, the, in between the five hours where you get those new batches of memories, you're making your own. Memories of this place and memories of talking with me, right? My dad won't get those. I suppose that is correct, very observant. Maybe you were the same person at the exact moment of the copying, but from that point forward, you've become two separate entities, haven't you? I suppose you could see it that way. What are you asking, Noah? Nothing. I suppose I'm just trying to understand. Alright. Take me out. Alright, so it's head to the west of modern body, so I guess up here. Yeah, did Null Pointer come up with the goods? He sure did. Hey, presto. Hey, hey. Let's go. Oh, what's up, business guy? <laughs> Good. HSE asks, what is Monomind? Monomind is the corporation that is evil and uh, trying to steal... Basically, um... They're trying to steal some, like, scientific work done by our character's dad. Um, the work being the ability to transfer consciousness from your mind into, like, a computer. Um, and I assume... HSC says this is the plot of Astro Boy. I'm actually not familiar. Um, so I, I wouldn't know. Um, I feel like it is the plot of, uh, of like, hypotheticals that I make up. Um, cause I was, I was talking about, like, corporate run, um, Rat Brain feels like this could be taken care of in patent court. Yeah, unfortunately they've resorted to kidnapping, which I feel like, um, you know, typically isn't particularly legal, but, uh, if no one knows, then, you know, how are they gonna, how are they gonna claim patent copyright if, uh, if you never hear from them again? Um, but, uh, the dad doesn't want this technology to get out because he's worried that it's, like, too dangerous. More than, um, more than, like, you know, he feels like it's his. He feels like he's, you know, worried that they're gonna misuse it. Which they almost definitely would. Um, but yeah, I was talking about the, uh, the concept of, like, a corporate-run, like, um, sort of mind space that you, you know, put your brain into, and how horrible it would be because, you know, like, you know, let's say it's Corporation A. Like, Corporation A all of a sudden has the data of your mind. Like, who's to say that they're not gonna, like, trap you in a like, in a, what looks like an office cubicle, and you're just gonna sort numbers forever. You don't have the issue of, you're not gonna get tired, because you're a computer. Like, they can, they can even remove, like, you, they can strip you of your body, and turn you into just, like, you know, a living intelligence that processes data. Um, you know, and then they can clone you as many times as you want. Um, Flashy Forward says this is the plot of Astro Boy is based, um, is a based comment. I guess I gotta watch Astro Boy. Um, this is the dumbest plan I've ever heard. Well, too late! I already made the call. The Pete's guy's on his way. Five minutes, huh? Or less. The crust mob never fails. Besides, I think the plan is blippin' genius. That's because you're as crazy as your uncle. You're gonna get yourself killed, Noah. Watch and learn, non-believer. Prepare to be amazed. Noah, please. At least stay on the line. Noah! Heh <laughs> heh. Whoa. Why are they animated like that? Like he's... <laughs> halt! This is a restricted area. What? This isn't the delivery address? Yes, but you need to be pre-cleared to approach. I have no information about pizza delivery. Can you check? I came all the way from Cross Mob. I have to hand this over in the next 50 seconds, man. Help me out. 48, 47. Sorry, not my problem. Please, 43. You don't know what happens if that timer hits zero. Five minutes or less. That's the promise. 
it's against monomine policy. It's getting cold. 32. Fine, fine, stand back. Come on, come on. 25, 24, come on. Do we have to fight the pizza delivery guy as well? Alrighty, let's take him out. They're blue, right? Which means they're uh, electroware. Now let's take out the lieutenant first. Get him, Skull. Yeah, I got a great, which means that I was correct. 18 damage. I could probably just punch this guy. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I can punch that guy. So, Ratbrain69, since you were talking about Patent Court, does, uh, does Patent Court account for kidnapping? If, if someone were to get kidnapped, how are they going to take you to Patent Court? Uh, oh, I got a pizza. Can you text into Patent Court? Instead of calling nine instead of calling 911, you know, you're like in a basement, you, you call Patent Court, you're like, Hey, uh, I've been kidnapped, but I want you to know that they're also trying to steal my intellectual property. Uh, so please don't let them do that. The intellectual property being more important than, you know, your own safety and well-being. Um. <laughs> hey, whoa, 911. My kidnapper is infringing on my patent. <laughs> so true, Ratbrain69. That joke completely stolen from chat, the hello. Mr. Patent Court, I'm so vulnerable. Please, I need you to clear my patent before someone else can steal it. It's, it's a pulley mechanism that is unique to this device. Please, Mr. This, this guy's the, the patent court. No. <laughs> End scene. Now hurry up and get inside. The next part is gonna get rough. Alright. Sweet. Got 500 credits. Intellectual property kidnapping. Oh, I guess I'm in a threat zone. Yeah, what if it, like, the new Saw movie? It's like, I want to play a game. And, like, you know, it's like you're, it's you in one chair, and then you see on the other one, it's like, you know, your patent for your, for your new product. And it's like, only one of you can walk away. Grr, I'm Jigsaw and I'm always angry because I feel like society wronged me. Grr. I'm Jigsaw uh, and I'm like the Joker but different. Grr, grr. I, 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 I'm also a clown though, like the Joker, but trust me, the Joker and I are different. There's so many Joker characters. Like there's a uh, there's Pennywise and Jigsaw. Um, I feel like the Riddler, even though it's also Batman, the Riddler is very Joker. Like one of them tells jokes, the other one tells riddles. Those are like pretty much the same thing. Like I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but who knows? Yeah. Grr! I'm the Joker! <laughs> what if that's how the Joker... What if that's how the Joker talked? That would be awesome. Grr! I'm the Joker! And then he laughed like this. <laughs> Grr! Grr! <laughs> Guys, welcome back to my stream. I'm talking about the Joker again. <laughs> I'm the Joker. Maybe that should be my stream title is 
Joker impressions with and and yes. Yeah, I would make a great Joker. Everyone knows this. People are always saying to me, and and yes, you would make a fantastic Joker. You go, grr. I'm the Joker. Flashy Ford says not three people dipping. Yeah, I'd imagine they the three people left most likely because I started doing my Joker impression, which is just me going he 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 I'm the Joker, and then kind of refusing to do anything else for like a little while. Anyway, you can come back now. I'm uh I'm not gonna do my Joker impression anymore. I actually like having viewers here, believe it or not. Um Yeah, I'll go back to talking about like, you know, what would happen if you uploaded your brain into a, into a computer. I don't know, I can talk about, like, simulation theory. I was talking about that earlier. Well, I, was, I mentioned it briefly earlier. By way of saying that what I was talking about wasn't simulation theory itself. But... The theory of, um... You know... The... I say you know, as if, like... <laughs> as if I've explained it already. Um... Interesting. It's the concept that we live in a simulation. However, you know, while initially easily dismissible, I've heard it put into some ways that I think gives it some, like, almost believability. Hello, who are you? Executive power dresser using stiletto slash. Okay. I assume you don't have a type because you're gray. Um, in that case, I will use fork because I feel like I haven't really gotten the chance to use it yet. Um, oh, easy. I just killed a person. Um, so, simulation theory. It's the concept that we live in a simulation, but how is how does it become, like, a compelling, um, like, compelling argument? So, there's probably something over here. The way that I've heard it told that makes it compelling to me... No, I don't... I, I also want to preface this. I don't believe simulation theory. Um, I think, you know, if, if there was more sort of proof, even though that proof would be impossible to get, um, then I could maybe believe it, but it's not as though I, like, completely disregard it, but I'll, I'll get to it when I, when I finish explaining, you know, why I think there's, like, interesting, an interesting case to be made in favor of simulation theory. Um, so, it's not just the concept that we are in a simulation, but perhaps the concept that we are inside a simulation, inside a simulation, inside a simulation, kind of going on infinitely or near infinitely. Because um, it's the thought that, uh, yay. If there was a society consisting of humans or you know, very similar to humans that manage to survive long enough and sort of become technologically advanced enough that they could create a simulation um, in which it emulates the way that... Let, let, let's assume it's humanity for the time being. Emulates the way that humanity started, then that simulation would be made and it would grow up the same way that that version of humanity grew up, right? You know, starting with the same little microorganisms in the same place and they crawl out at the same time, they evolve into the same thing, and then from there it's, you know, sort of, it's just gonna keep evolving and growing and developing in the same way. But the thing is, it's a simulation so advanced that these creatures are real, they're alive, and they have thoughts, and so eventually it gets to the point where that society is so advanced that they're building their own supercomputer with their own simulation inside to see where they came from. So on and so forth, ad infinitum, you know, to the point that every single, you know, like, like the multiverse almost doesn't exist like wide, but rather like deep. Like all the multiverses are encapsulated within the same larger universe just smaller each time within layers and layers of simulation. And maybe some things are changing here and there. 
but you know, it's so much, so much simulation. Um, I wonder if this big note is a clue. Um, yeah. Um, but I, I don't know, that, that to me is one reason why I think simulation theory has maybe some legs to stand on, is the, uh, is the deep and sort of, the deep recurring aspect of it. Like, the over and over, if one society is able to reach the position where they are able to, uh, I don't know. If one society is able to reach the position where they can create a simulation, and then they can recreate themselves, then, all of a sudden you have infinite simulations, because if they're creating themselves, and in this time, if you assume they're recreating themselves perfectly, then there's never going to be a simulation in which that simulation does not end up creating a simulation. Which is crazy. But then it begs the question of, like, if we were living in a simulation, what would it change? I think the answer is, like, nothing, really. Um, I don't know. I mean, it might be a bit of a mindfuck for, like, a, you know, a couple of months, maybe a couple of years. But, like, I think for the most part, I'd be like, there's nothing I can do. There's no way that I can signal to the simulation existing above me that, you know, I'm conscious of the fact that I'm in a simulation. So... All I can do is just get on with my life. I mean, it's like, you know, like if if existentialism is something you already consider, you know, like the the concept of like the existential concept of like the blank canvas, like your life is yours to do, or to to provide meaning as you wish, but you have no inherent meaning placed upon you. You know, simulation theory shouldn't bother you that much if that's a mindset that you can apply from your day to day or apply to your day to day because you know it, like you your worth is not defined by whether or not you're in a simulation your worth is defined by yourself i i would imagine with things like theology um, it might get a little more complex you know the concept of like does god exist if we're in a simulation but then you know you can think about like well does god exist at the top level the one that is not a simulation if there is one that exists that isn't a simulation does god exist there because you know and and talking uh christianity because that's the one i'm most familiar with um, if god exists there but god also exists in all things then god would exist within the simulation so you know uh, people that subscribe to that belief system maybe wouldn't have so much to worry about. But then you could see it the other way, which is like, well, gods, the gods are like, kind of like what created us. Therefore, the gods are just more us. You are your own god, which is an interesting concept, I think. Um, no, don't make her buff. Take this person out. Nope. Minigun. No. Just gonna keep punching. I like that animation a lot with the knife. It's cool. All right. It's it's got to be a this punch for the next. There it is. I'm trying to conserve my jack move and my, uh, and my DP for what I assume is going to be a boss fight coming up. I don't know, I wonder how far, how far into the game I am. Um. Don't forget the box. No. I don't know. 
I think if anything, simulation theory kind of lends itself to like absurdism. Like, I don't know. I know that this is not what uh, what absurdism is. Um, like, but it is just like an absurd concept that like we spend. Well, okay, maybe it is a little bit. It's absurd that we spend so much time looking for meaning in the universe, but all it is is just like a science experiment, really. It's people wanting to understand themselves. We're a product of people wanting to understand themselves better, and that's why we were born. Um, again, I want to reiterate that I actually don't really believe in simulation theory, um, but I do think it's interesting. And, uh,. I don't know. And then you might say, like, why don't you believe in simulation theory? Um, and my answer is, there's not really a reason, but there's kind of no reason to believe in it either. Like, this reality is all that we know. Like, I, l I look around this room and, you know, I see the room. And to me it exists. Cool. So, in that case, it does exist. You know, perception is reality. And, like, for all we know, the way that this room looks to me right now, which is solid and normal, could be super glitchy, you know, in the universe above us. Like, you know, we're in a simulation that, like, is, like, funky and, like, kind of looks like an eyesore, but to us it's, you know, it's full of majesty and beauty. Um, and then maybe their simulation is so photorealistic that it would make us nauseous as soon as we saw it, you know, more photorealistic than anything we can even imagine. Anyway, I'm going on a, a massive crazy tangent, but I'm, uh, thank you all for sticking with me through this, through this tangent. So I'm thinking, I'm sure that it, like, a, like a boss is coming up soon. Um, we're gonna fight the boss. I assume we're gonna kick its ass. And then, uh, and then we're gonna move on to some art corner. Um, and that's how we'll end off the week. And everyone here will cry and cry because they know that it's gonna be it's gonna be two whole days before they're able to get any more and and yes. HSC uh, says they hope we're living in a simulation. Yeah, I mean it's fine, it doesn't really matter either way, right? Like um For some people, they think it would be cool, you know? And, I don't know, it's actually interesting to think about. I haven't really thought about it this way, but like, for some people, I would assume that, like, they want to be living in the simulation. To them, living in the simulation is what gives their life meaning. You know, while for other people, it, it might feel as though living in the simulation takes away meaning. To some people, it, it probably adds, which is a, I don't know, that's an interesting concept. Yeah, boss time for real, for real. Whoa, it's a guy! What the grid is all this? This stuff is directly out of a screamer vid. Noah. I know, Ryder. It's cracks. I'm disturbed too, but... Not that. I just got an update from the construct. Your dad was moved to Crawl's office on the top floor. Get out of there, fast! It's a trap! Oh, what was this guy's? There she is! Offspring of this- No, that was, uh, that was Gin's voice. It was like, There she is! Offspring of the sun! It was like that. Some Dr. Eggman voice. You, the creep from my dad's house. What are you doing to these people? Don't worry, they volunteered. That's definitely way worse than the exit I was doing last time. Most of them. <laughs> are they dead? No, they are uploading. There is no reason to keep the deceased plugged into an experiment relying on neural activity, is there? Silly girl, dumb and dad. Oh no, he had like sort of a sing-song voice, didn't he? Like an old man sing-song voice? When you said you wanted to talk with him, you were talking about the copy of my dad, right? The construct? He will supplement- He will supplement his- my research. Fill the blanks, the tanks, the power banks, even if he is a digital imposter. A digital imposter? 
He's a copycat of code, a thief. I invented the technology first, me. Still, I want the construct. It's important for my research. Can I have it? Hand it over, give. Do you think I have it in my pocket? How stupid do you think I am? Mary, you are a waste of space. Dude, get him. The fact that you would misplace a database in the first place makes you a case of almost impressive disgrace. I'm going to take you with me, now. And how are you planning on doing that? I've already beaten you and your goons once before, you lab coat dope. Let's get him. Whoa, that's a cool one. Ah, what a beautiful breakthrough! To upload someone's entire life and consciousness to a data drive, the answer to life and death. The technology is mine! I invented it first, but your digital daddy is playing find his keepers. No, I say, it was I! It's fake, both of him. Lie, lie, code on fire, imposter, imposter. You wish. Solaris's don't lie or steal. We're just better. Otherwise, why'd you need my dad's work? You're just bummed out he beat you. That's enough of your rough stuff. I know you aren't so tough. Come on, offspring of AI. Oh, nice dodge. Alright, so... I don't know, I'm thinking we should just... Whoa. Uh, let's take out the bazooka first, then. Yeah, and then we can jack move out the other guys. Nice, got the bazook. Ram slam. Thank you, ma'am. I mean, nice job buffing each other, but I think you guys are done anyway, right? Perfect. This music is good. Alright, take out this wetware guy. Laser face? Alright, give me a quick heal. Hehehe, <laughs> I'm the Joker. Okay, so actually, on the topic of Joker, um, uh, I don't know who needs to know this or who asked or whatever. I didn't like the Joker movie, personally. I thought it was a bit, I don't know, it was a bit too, I don't know, full of itself in its own way, and like, I don't know, it didn't, it didn't grip me, and it sort of felt like it was like, Attempting to be really really sad for the sake of having you sympathize with a character that I don't think is particularly sympathetic um, And also like you know it, It's like super cringy. I mean people ended up like, you know, I'm the Joker baby like stuff like that You know, I'm a lot like Joker from the movie Joker um, Oh, I need to use a data packet um, uh, But um, so yeah, obviously, uh, after Joker 1, I was like, if they do another Joker movie, like, I'm not gonna watch it. How'd they manage to do the only thing that could possibly intrigue me back to the Joker franchise, then making it a musical with Lady Gaga? That's insane. Good on them. I don't know whose, I don't know whose creative decision that was, whether it was Todd Phillips or someone else, but like, Insane. It, I think that my jack moves are worse than my my execute moves. I'll keep it in the back pocket in case I need in case he like summons more guys or something. Oops. Um, 
yeah, so, I mean, I'm not exactly, like, chomping at the bit to see it, but, like, I'm so interested in what they're gonna do with, like, a, you know, this new Joker. New Joker, not nude Joker. I don't want a nude Joker. How much, how powerful is this guy? Am I, like, doing something wrong? He keeps eating berries. Oh, I got him. Okay. Yeah, see, that one, it, feel, it felt like I was, like, more appropriately leveled compared to the other one. HSE says nice. Thank you, HSE. Oh, Flashy Forward says nice. Wow, thank you, guys. Whoa. That's a lot of support. I guess the guy's just gone now. All right, let's save it up. Cool. Mono Mine Headquarters, R&D level. All right, and let's get out of here. It's time for a little art corner. Cool, cool. Take it to just me. Ho, ho. And I'm just gonna bring OBS into the middle so I can see everything, have all this stuff up. All right, so, uh, so yeah, after the first art corner that was, I wanna say it's like four weeks ago now, um, you know, that first video that I, that I ever did, video, the first stream I ever did, um, that first art corner, um, was great fun, I had a good time, uh, and I've been promising more and more ever since. Um, but right before we were supposed to do one, two weeks ago, I was just gonna show something of my own because no one had you know, written in anything. Uh, but now from someone, uh, anonymous, we have something. Uh, so I'm excited to share. Um, but yeah, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, uh, I do want this to be like a weekly thing. Uh, definitely. I, I'm bummed that it hasn't been. Uh, but I'm also, you know, not going to be too hard on myself because, you know, my, my freaking lung collapsed. So, um, all right. Anyway, let's uh, get into it. Oh, let me change the the stream uh, information. Art corner. Let's talk about art. And then the category. I learned this recently. Last time we did an art corner, I changed it to just chatting. But now you can change it to art. Cool. All right. Take me here and take me here. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know necessarily how to present everything as it comes, but I have three pieces, all from the same person uh, who's asked to be anonymous. Um, and the title of the piece, sorry, let me just double check it. The title of the piece is, nope, that's the wrong one. Um, Untitled Face Paintings. Okay, cool. Um, I've seen them before, obviously, just as I was pulling them up and getting everything ready to show, but um, yeah, here is the first of the three. Or actually, let's start with this. And this has all three of them all on show. Uh, so these are the the three face paintings. Um, obviously, you can't see me anymore. Um, I'm not going to cloud it up with my, uh, with my stinky face. But yeah. And then I, I was thinking, I don't know. For this, I just, uh, in the order that uh, I was shown, uh, get rid of the other ones and then bring one into the middle. All right, so this is one of the face paintings. Um, it's cool. I like the I like the use of the you know, the colors, but the the warm colors in particular. I like the fade into the white. I don't know. For me, white and yellow go together so nicely. 
Because, I don't know, it's so easy to imagine that, like, you know, that bright white heat. Um, you know, like, this, this fade in. It's like the, you know, like the heat of the sun kind of thing. And now I've made it too big and it's hard to get it back to a normal size. Um, I really ought to, like, get better at manning this ship. Um, but yeah. I don't know. It's cool. Uh, it's like a plague doctor, but it looks sort of more like it's, uh, you know, affixed to this person's face. Um, which I think, uh, at a glance, I noticed seemed thorda- sort of thematically appropriate um, for these face paintings, because this one is, um, you know, it's someone with stuff going on outside and it's blue smoke coming off their face. Um, yeah, the outside actually really intrigued me when I first saw this. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so the face paintings, uh, three strange faces. Um, and then the last one is this guy who has a trumpet on their face. Um, yeah, and you can see here again, almost the same yellow into like white in the background here. Let me see if I can zoom it in. Do you see what I'm talking about? Uh, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see my like mouse pointer, but like here-ish, doot doot. Uh, here comes this sort of blue smoke that's almost similar to the one from the last painting um, com coming out of the trumpet. So now let's see, can I get them all back together again? Because there was another thing I wanted to point out. Um, you got a bink. There you go. All right. Yeah, I'm not sure how big each of them uh, is slash are. Um, how big they are. How big each is. Um, but yeah. So, I think most obvious in um, this first face painting, the uh, the sort of like circles at the bottom. And over here, I don't know if you can see, but it's a chair um, in one of the circles. And then, I don't know, similarly over here, oh, you gotta bring that to the front. Uh, you see, you can see those circles, they're a little lighter because they're in yellow, but the same circles there in the back. Um, but then, for this face painting, I don't think you have those same circles anywhere, at least nowhere that I saw in the painting. Um, which is interesting. I mean, I don't know why this one is different. Um, I mean, it also has the, the different background. You know, this one has a chair. This one, I don't know, I suppose it has these, these like, almost stones, these bricks, stones in the tree. Um, yeah, where is it? This one doesn't have that. It has the background with the window and the outside and none of the circly bits. All right, so now let's talk about them all together now that I've gotten that little observation out of the way. Um, I like the style. They look like oil paint. Um, and I don't know. Thematically, I think it's cool. I, I don't know. It's almost... It almost reads to me as three, three emotions, maybe. And I don't know, if I ever get any of this stuff wrong when I'm talking about like, you know, here's what I feel about it, like, here's what I think. Like, you know, I apologize, but I, I did go on the rant earlier that's like, I think art is subjective. Like, if this is what I get out of my experience viewing it, like, you know, maybe that's not what the artist wanted, but it's, uh, it's how I felt about it. And so, yeah, it, it, it seems to read to me as almost three emotions. Like, you know, this this trumpet one is so much, like, jubilance. Like, 
like joy, pomp and circumstance, the the engagement and enjoyment of life. Um, this red one. I don't know. Anger is sort of how it reads to me. There's like a stiffness almost to the like to the to the form of the body. I mean, if you even put the beak to the side, like the way that the shoulders are slanted into this sort of stiff jut, um, almost as if to try and push people away. And then, uh, yeah, this one, I don't know, I could be wrong. Um, sadness, it feels, you know, uh, a loneliness that, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel like a lot of people have probably experienced this emotion, but like, the, the feeling that you are pouring out of yourself, like, you're trying to grasp onto ego. You're trying to grasp onto what it means to be the person that you are, but it keeps slipping through your fingers. Um, I don't know. Does that make any sense to anyone else? It's, I, I don't know. I think, but, mm, I don't know, they're also, they don't seem to be the same person, you know, this one has a distinct lack of hair, I mean, I guess these two could be, who knows, I don't know, the, the pointies in the red one, you know, that reads as anger to me. Also, okay, so the faces are three of the primary colors, but the shirts that these three people are wearing are representative of, you know, so the face and the shirt here, the shirt and the face here, and then the face and the shirt. I don't know. Rock, paper, scissors is some kind of commentary. Anger beats happiness. Happiness beats sadness. Sadness beats anger. Maybe it's the other way around. I think it depends on who you are. You know, I've interacted with a lot of people who seem to have primary, like almost default reactions to bad things. Like some people I think become sad. Some people become angry. And some people become, I think when it comes to bad things, you know, scared is usually the third one that I would think about. Um, I don't, I don't know, uh, for myself, yeah, it doesn't matter about me, but, you know, maybe it's something to do more with that. Maybe I'm misinterpreting and maybe it's not joy is the, is the third, but maybe it's fear. I don't know. But this, I don't know, this trumpet guy, it's so, so joyful to me. Joy can be a reaction to a lot of things, though, I think. It doesn't have to always be genuinely because of happiness. It's like there's that... Is it... I don't know. The, the... Rat Brace is joyful but scary at the same time. Maybe, yeah. I mean, there are all those those tendrils sort of, like, lurking about. Um, but I was going to talk about the... Uh, it's that famous electric shock experiment who... You know, the name of the guy that did it, I should remember, but I, I don't. It's like Mill, Milford, something. Um, but in the electric shock experiment, something they noticed was a lot of people, um, and actually just to catch everyone up in case they've never heard of this experiment before, um, basically, people were brought in, they met another person who was like a, a plant, um, and they were both like, you're going to choose roles, the plant chose first and always ended up in the getting shocked role. And then the, you know, the actual person they were testing always ended up in the, in the shocking role. They put the plant in one room and the guy, the, the normal person, the non-plant in the other room. And the non-plant shocked the other person, shocked, I say in parentheses, because they didn't act, they weren't actually shocking them. They were listening to like a pre-recorded message every time they pressed one of the buttons, but with increasing you know, uh, voltage until the person started like begging and crying out for help. Um, 
But one thing that the person noted in like the, in the paper they wrote about this was that some people, some of the people who were doing the shocking when it started to get really intense and the person is yelling out on the other side of the wall and like screaming for help and like banging on the, on the door, uh, they started like laughing, um, or like smirking. And, you know, the initial assumption was like, oh, is there like a higher concentration of like, you know, sadists in the world than we might've previously thought. Uh, but the answer was no, they were laughing because they were nervous. Um, which I think is a pretty common reaction, like nervous chuckling, and then, like, genuine, like, I don't know, panic laughs, almost, I think is, like, the point that it was getting to. Like, joy does not, is not the only, joy is not the only reaction to joy. Or I suppose joy is not an exclusive reaction to happiness. I don't know, I think presenting certain joyful expressions and emotions can be indicative of fear at times um anyway i think these are awesome um the kind of thing i would love to hang in a bedroom um most notably my bedroom because i need to hang my art back up um but yeah um well nope that's the wrong one sorry uh this is the one i was going for um incredible stuff um to the anonymous sender, uh, thank you so much. Um, this is really, really cool. And, you know, if you want to send in more, or if anyone else, you know, uh, HSC, Flashy Fours, Rat Brain, the people in the chat, um, if any of you guys have made anything, it doesn't have to be a painting, it can be, you know, sculpture, or uh, drawing, or video, or you know, if you've made a video game, uh, send that my way too. Um, you know, uh, abide by the rules, uh, which you can find on my Twitch page. You know, basically just um, don't steal other people's art. And, uh, you know, don't use, like, discriminatory language. And if it's video art, uh, try to keep it away from, like, pornographic or excessively gory. Uh, those are pretty much the only rules subject to change if someone finds a loophole in those rules and uh and you know sends me something real nasty um but you know you get the idea send in some art i want to do this every week um but you know as you can imagine it depends a lot on you know the the people that are engaged in the in the stream you know to actually do the sending in because you know, otherwise, I, I could probably show, like, you know, some stuff that I've done, but I, I don't want, you know, every every Friday to be, like, a half hour of, like, self-indulgence. Like, I, I genuinely want it to be a place where, you know, people can send in stuff and, and I share it out. Um, because I think art should be seen, you know. Um, and if you have friends that you think would be interested in doing something like that, you know, let them know, point them in my direction. Or if you have friends that like, you know, excessively charming young gamers, you can also send them in my direction. Um, it's interesting, I had a conversation with a friend years and years ago, um, but it was about this concept of, you know, what, like, how, how, do I, how do we phrase it again? It was like, what does art do in a vacuum, I think it was something like that, but it was basically like, we came to this conclusion of, you know, there are like actually two steps in the process of art, which is like, you know, the art creation, and then like the art, what is it, almost like the art sharing, like, you know, and it's, that's not to say that art that is not shared, that you want to keep to yourself, that you, that is private, that's not to say that it is in any way like incomplete or like lesser art. But rather that like art, art lacks like opinion and subjectivity until it is, it is shared. 
like to me subjectivity as i've talked about like basically all stream subjectivity is so important to me in art um and it's this concept of like if i was the only person in the whole entire world and i never interacted with another person then anything i thought would be objective and i'm talking person if i was the only creature you know i would see a stone and if i ate the stone but i didn't feel terrible and i'm like oh s stones are food that would be the only truth because that's the only i'm the only opinion that exists therefore anything i think is is true um does that make sense Basically, what I'm saying is, like, the same thing can kind of apply to art. And, like, having, you know, tried art for a while, like, I, I know how much it's, like, my opinion at least, slingshots back and forth. You know, I'd, I'd be, like, writing something and I'd be like, this is the best thing ever. This, you know, oh, it's like, voice of a generation material. Whoa. You know, and then 20 minutes later, I'd be like, I, you know, I hate this. Like, I'm a terrible artist. I don't know why I ever tried this out. Um... You know, I'm, I'm an embarrassment kind of thing. But because no one else had ever seen it, any time I had those thoughts, whether positive or negative, that was the only truth that existed about the art. Like, it was amazing when I thought it was, and it was terrifying when I thought it was bad, you know? Um, I don't know. Food for thought. Art is worth sharing because alone... You can drive yourself crazy with it. Uh, I've been there. Um, but anyway, that was a, a lengthy monologue to finish off the stream. Um, I wanted to thank you all for coming. As always, I've been and and yes. And and yes. I love you all very, very much. I will see you guys on Monday. If you guys are around on Monday, tell your friends to swing by. Tell everyone to swing by. We're having a big get-together. It's Mondeground. Not today, but it will be. Alright. Take care, everyone. <laughs>